Hey guys, my name is Heather Lindsay. And my name is Cornelius Lindsay. And I'm so excited that you landed on Life with the Lindsays. This is so exciting. This gives us an opportunity to share our life with yours. Yes, we're going to be talking about everything from entrepreneurship to ministry to your purpose to why you are here. Family, parenting, relationships, marriage, sex, you name it, we are talking about it. So thank you so much for joining us today with Life with the Lindsays. Enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, that was everybody, and welcome to up. Life with the Lindsays. My Ooh. name is Heather. My name is Cornelius. And I feel like it's such a chill day. Happy Thanksgiving. I know it was yesterday. I know. I just came from the gym. I haven't shaved. Never like, did literally, I just threw this hoodie on. Oops. I was in the middle of trading, and my darling husband, like, babe. I know. Team was like, yo, we got to get this podcast finished. I'm going to get it to us ASAP. And I'm like, oh, you know, you're, you're right. You're right. <laughs> you're so right. So, so I had to get it to him. So. So I feel like this is like the common theme around like holidays, right? You get around your family, you get around people that, you know, maybe you don't spend your life with on a regular basis, right? Mm -hmm. And they drive you up the wall and maybe they start questioning, why are you single? When are you having kids? This is how you need to parent your kid. This is how you need to do this. This is how you do, you don't need to do that. Maybe we can talk about dealing with like family members on the holidays. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, everything is polarized now, too. You got to you talk about politics. You know, oh, you got family members who vaccine? are vaccinated. <laughs> They're like, are you vaccinated? There's a table for are the you, vaccinated. Are you, vac- the, are you vaccinated, baby? Here for you're not vaccinated. vaccinated. You need to get vaccinated. You're if you're not die. vaccinated, you're a murderer. Then, then, you know, you're not you're not helping your fellow brother. That's not loving others as you love yourself. Right. Complete, right. complete, complete, you know, um, miscommunication with the uh, not miscommunication but complete uh, misread of the scripture itself but nevertheless <laughs> you got to deal with that you got to deal with the vaccination question and then you got to deal with the booster question when you got a vaccine but did you get a booster because now they're in like six or seven boosters now yeah isn't it something that we live in oh great california where vaccine is just what everyone loves <laughs> and then and all the mandates and yet florida well, we were just there in Florida. I don't even know if they even know COVID is still going on right now. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> and they have the lowest COVID rate. It's in Cali, crazy. you go everywhere. It's like you can't get in unless you're, unless you're vaccinated and everybody has masks on. And then you go, you know, we were in Greenville, South Carolina a couple of weeks ago. And then we were in Miami a couple of weeks ago. And it just didn't even seem like COVID was a thing there. Yeah. The cool, so weird. And, and uh, one thing I love about California, you still have pockets people because you have people who like, I'll go to certain places like the Whole Foods doesn't require you to wear a mask. I walked through the Whole Foods like, and just walked yeah. in and they're like, whatever. Because I'm just like, you know, what? I'm, I'm, I'm really, really, really tired of it. But nevertheless, this you got, is not about you got masks that or COVID, question. Y'all. You have that question. You have the mask question. You know, are you going to wear a mask in the house? Have you had this? Because I, I know, I know people who their family is based, is saying to them, you can't come to the family gathering if you have not been vaccinated. Yeah. And I mean, that's, that's real. I, so many people have died and some people are really struggling with that because obviously they have older family members. So I feel like everybody has their own strong convictions and they should go with whatever their convictions are and we shouldn't press our you know convictions on anybody. Um, but then there's that question of, you know, maybe you got divorced during COVID, right? A lot mm-hmm. of people did. A lot of marriages fell apart and, you know, now you're, you're back and your family's like, you don't have a new man yet. Or if you're single, you might be like sitting there like I took two years off from dating because of COVID. Right. And it's like all this pressure and all these questions from people trying to say, why don't you have this? Why aren't you doing this? Are you still trying to sell that house? You still trading them stocks? You making any money? I bet you ain't making no money. And by the way, if you didn't know, go to the busy traders with the S dot com. I'm teaching a stock course on there. But um, I love to trade stocks. And as y'all know, I've been doing it for a while. But I just feel like there's always that family member is going to have something to say about something. So the question is, how are we going to respond this holiday season? Mm, I don't know. Because, you, you know, post about pushing you know, buttons. I, you know, I could. So, yeah, I, you know, I just, I don't know. 
Yeah, I did. I did a post about pushing button. It was Michael Myers, and it was like he, he had to dance off the steam. It was like, you know, either I'm going to need the Holy Spirit or Jamie Lee Curtis. I'm going to need somebody oh my God. to help me because because it ain't looking good. But even like the people who who are divorced, I know a lot of people who've gotten a divorce and yes. now they're ready to go through their holiday season. Um, and it's going to be rough. It's going to be rough on them. It's going to be rough on the kids. It's going to be rough on everybody else. And then you have the family members who show up, all the friends who show up to the house and they like, we're such and so. And they're like, oh, you know, we're, we're, we're not together anymore. And they're like, well, what happened? Girl, you better. And you know, then you go through all of that. I told you, you told you. You just should have listened to me. You didn't listen to me. And then, you know, you got that. And I, I think that, I think that we have to, we have to recognize that, we're going to have people who are going to disagree with us. We're going to have people who are going to question what we do. We're going to have people who are going to say some rude things. Yeah. And I think a couple of things we have to do is we have to create proper boundaries. You Absolutely. Know, we got to tell people. I love a good boundary. Yeah, we got to tell people, you know what, this is, this is not something that I'm comfortable talking about with you. And well, you yeah. talk about it with them. I do because I feel comfortable talking about it with you them. You posted on social media, I did. And also social media because I wanted to. Because I'm grown and I can do what I want to do. The same way you grown, <laughs> same way you grown. But what I'm saying to you is that I don't, I don't want to entertain. I don't want to entertain your questions or your comments. Yeah. And criticism is unasked for advice. If I ask, if I if I wanted if I wanted your opinion, I would have asked for it. Yeah. Right, and asked for it. Yeah. And you you giving it to me does not mean that I have to sit down and listen to it. I don't care. And, and my thing is, I don't care how old you are. You tell me some well. Well, I'm your elder. You can you you can be my elder. Yeah. You going you know. But I was about to say something. I you don't know what? Say, I don't want to say what I was about we, to say. Amen. We talked about this last week. <laughs> she though, said, "Amen." With tracing our triggers, and I feel like if your family is pressing those buttons or something happens, it's a good point to ask yourself, like, how can I trace this back? Right? Like, how can I trace this back to what's triggering me? Like, why is what they said upsetting me? Like, I remember when I went home for Christmas, and one of my sisters was, was like, "Your clock is ticking." And, you know, you ain't going to get no man. You ain't going to do this. You ain't going to do that. And it didn't really bother me. I mean, obviously, I knew I was single and I was probably the only single person in my family at the time. But I don't think you're the only married person in your family. Oh, I'm, did I say that out loud? Oops. Oh, all right. Oops. Everybody call. did back. it again. Baby. In honor of Britney Spears. Baby. <laughs> okay. So I remember it happening, her saying it. But I remember it almost like I saw it almost like bouncing off my chest. Like I wasn't letting it penetrate my heart. I wasn't letting it affect me because I remember saying, going back and having my time with the Lord and saying, God, I'm on this beautiful journey with you. And I'm so thankful for my process. I'm so thankful for my journey. You are more than enough for me. I trust you. So just because, you know, you're on this journey and you're in a good place, like people are going to attack you. The tests are going to come, but you have to say, am I going to sign for the package of what this family member is giving me? And for me, I was like, no, I'm not going to accept that package. I'm not going to. And so I remember leaving my quiet time, going back outside. And my sister was still harassing me about, you ain't got no man. Da, da, da. And I was like, okay, sis. And I was like, do you want me to settle the same way you did? Oh, shoot. <laughs> and so, Every time you tell that story, I'd be like, eh. but then I know the sister you're talking yeah, you about. I'm like, so then I was like, you know what? Um, I feel like it all depends on who that family member is that's in your family. I feel like sometimes people go to Thanksgiving or holidays as like a measuring stick. Like, oh, look at me. I've graduated with this degree and I have this job and I make this amount of money. And that's it's not a time for what's called a peeing contest. Pissing right? contest. No, I, say it I can't with pissing. say that word. Pissing contest. Maybe there might be children listening. Hey, kids. It's a pissing oh. contest. Okay. So... What I would do with family members is, again, put boundaries. I remember one family member was trying to challenge me on something that's clearly against my biblical values, right? And I remember telling that family member, hey, I don't think this is a conversation that we should talk about because we're going to disagree and it's going to turn into an argument. So this is probably going to be a waste of time, right? Like, let's not cross this boundary. Let's take this area right here and let's shelve it. Because we're not going to agree. You're not going to change the way that I think. And I'm not going to change the way that you think. So let's just enjoy our time together. Because enjoy this pumpkin pie. Exactly. Our time is limited together. Right. I'm only here for a couple of days. Speaking of which, you somehow got out of going to Michigan for the past year and a half. I just want to drop that in there. We we moved across the entire country. <laughs> we, we, legit, right. we legit moved right. from one whole coast to the next. <laughs> 
All right. I love, I listen, listen, I love my in loves, love them to life. Okay. I hate where they live. <laughs> And I well, don't think live in I, Maui or something. I mean, you know, if if I never go there again in my life, I will be just fine. I legit yeah. hate where they live. I don't like the cold, so going there for holidays is extremely difficult because yeah. I don't I don't want to go anyplace where I was born in Mississippi. Aren't you glad we adjusted though? Because remember, every Thanksgiving we would be in Michigan. And I then- remember that from the time from the time we met from yeah. the first from the first year we were together. We weren't even married, and I went to I went to spend Thanksgiving with. With your, with you and your, uh, and your family. And that's when I asked your mom if I could marry you. Aw, That's when I met the whole family and I thought it felt like the United Nations. And <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why are people in here? I was like, yo, what's up? <laughs> Konnichiwa. <laughs> I was like, what up? <laughs> I was like, uh, oh, it's, it's a, it's a lot of people in this house right now, but you're going to have some people who going to. Who gonna who going who gonna, who gonna press your button? They are. And that's why it's important that we trace our triggers. And that's why. We always recommend going to therapy, y'all. We love our sponsor, BetterHelp. They're not like some like self-help line. It's like literally co- licensed therapist that can help walk you through your grief, your trauma, those triggers, um, your childhood trauma, whatever the case is, they can help you walk through it. Yeah. So if you have whatever it is, it's interfering with your happiness. And here's the thing. You may need better help more than ever. <laughs> after the holiday season, I just spent some time with your family. Maybe like, you know what? What, what was it? What was them people that was was the about? The was <laughs> they, they was talking about better help, and they, I mean, they they have been an amazing sponsor. But whatever is preventing you from achieving your goals, whatever you're looking, uh, whatever you know is keeping you disconnected, and also, I mean, we're we're getting to the crunch. This is like the yeah. end of the year, and you're thinking about, okay, what am I getting ready to go into for 2022? That's this real. would be a great time to 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 reach out to better to to our sponsor, better help to be able to, you know, see, okay, what are some things that I can be working on now in preparation for the next year that I'm going to, whether it's depression, whether it's stress, whether it's, you know, sleeping, um, I mean, insomnia, whether it's family problems, you know, couples therapy, marriage, tomorrow, are you excited? Oh gosh, family conflicts, grief, (laughs) self-esteem, whatever it may be, it's important for you to go and get the help that you need. I want you guys to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you will get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash Lindsay's. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash Lindsay. And Lindsay's is L-I-N-D-S-E-Y. It's not A-Y. So L-I-N-D-S-E-Y. Always hit me with the A-Y. Yeah, betterhelp, right. H-E-L-P. I've, uh, I've known, I've had friends I've known for over 15 years. They'd be like, what's up, Cornelius Lindsay? I'm like, that. You, you put an A, you put an A at the end of my name again. You don't know my name. As long as I've known you, you don't know my name. And you don't sit here and talk about some. But, but anyway, the people that you, uh, yeah, do with your family. I mean, you know, you're gonna you're gonna have some people who're gonna be critical of you and say all kind of bull crap. And I, I love one thing that you that you that you were talking about though, and that's you know making sure that you have those proper boundaries up. You let people know. Yeah. I don't want to talk about this, and then when they bring yeah. it up again, you're like, listen. I, I you will see. respect my boundary. Yeah. You will respect it. I do yeah. not want to talk about it. Yeah. Because it's not going to produce anything that's going to be up. It's going to be good. And one thing I was going to talk about was I think there are different people who respond to different things. I think we should talk about yeah. the different responses. You know, like when you have people like like me who I'm working on, um, I'm working on my response <laughs> to certain things. You have those people who are like, all right. Press the wrong you button. One, <laughs> you know, one more time. That's that's me. That's that's me. And and when I when I black out, it's when when I tell you, like I feel like if you gonna press if you gonna press my buttons, you gonna keep going and you are gonna end up pressing the wrong one. The thing is though, on my side, I'm not okay. I don't, and this is just me saying like with certain family members that might not you, but like family members that just be ready, uh-huh. right, to set it off, uh-huh. right. Like I'm the family member who's ready to say it at all. <laughs> He's ready to say it all at all times. But I really do. I don't think I have a family member like that. Well, there might be one. Yeah, you know what you right. There might be one or two. Right, I was right, about to right. say. Uh, I just look on the bright side. I'd be like, you know what? Everybody's pretty calm. But you're right. It might be a, a crazy one in there. <laughs> oh uh, yes. But it's like for me, I don't try to push anybody's buttons. I don't like fighting. I don't like conflict. I want all of us to get along and be in this happy bubble where we just skip off and hold hands. But if we're having hard conversations and I'm saying what I believe to be the truth, it can be considered pushing somebody's buttons. But I don't realize that because I'm just saying the truth. It just happened to push your buttons because I can't control your trauma. 
I only can control like how I see things. Right. So I think sometimes people say things and they don't realize that they are pressing somebody else's buttons. Like I, it is never, and I've said this since we got married, it is never my intention to fight with anybody. I don't like conflict. Mm. You're the only one, you're the one that has brought the, you know, confront the situation, Heather. And I'm just like, you know, I won't talk about it. I just, it's not that I'm suppressing. I'm just like, I don't, I want to avoid it altogether. Oh no, I can't avoid it. I can't, I can't. And that actually calls conflict with us because like, I don't, I can't can't avoid it. He will literally, I'll go two days and I'm like, I don't want to talk to you or about it right now. I'm processing. I can't do that. And he is like, why is it that I always have to come to you and confront and confront? And I'm like, cause you like confrontation. I don't, I like happy land. I mean, yo, I was in the gym this morning <laughs> and so I'm taking this, I'm taking, you know, I'm, I'm exchanging the, um, exchanging the, the little equipment hooks out. And I was, I took, I took this thing off. It was like, it was a pulley. I took it off and I put it over like with the rest of the stuff. This, this guy comes over. And he like, you know, I have my headphones on. He comes over, he like hits me on my arm. He hit me hard. He's kind of tapped me, take my headphones off. He's like, he's like, he's holding up the thing I just put over. And he said, he said, if you ever see this, this is mine. Don't ever put it over there. This is mine. This is mine. And so Uh-oh. at this, Uh-oh. you already know. So now at this point, I feel disrespected. <laughs> so I look at him and I was like, I said, yo, 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 who are you talking to? He was like, no, I saw you put it over here. I said, I don't know you. I legit don't know you. I said, but don't you ever like, number one, don't put your hands on me. Number two. And I just, oh I legit, gosh. I went there. You went crazy black man on him. I went crazy black man on him. And he's like, he's like, he's like, Hey, he's like, Hey, 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 hey you need to calm down. And I was like, no, 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 bro. Don't you ever come and tell. And then that's when I was just like, Phew. so then I guess one of the owners or managers or whatever it is came over and you know, super kind, but it was just like, I can't that I can't, I can't deal with it. Yeah. I can't, I got, I got to confront that. I'm that dude, right? I'm that dude who like, you know, I'm, 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 I, I like to think that I have the personality of Jesus. I flip Ooh. over tables. Ooh. More like Peter. <laughs> More like Peter, babe. Hey, I would, I'm telling you, if I was a disciple, I'd have been Peter. I'd be like, yo, you, like, you like, let, cut let's cut ear their off. ear off. And then like, let's cuss them out. I, I feel like Peter cursed. Without a shadow of a doubt, After Peter watching cursed. watching Chosen, I feel like, I feel like Peter too. cursed. I feel like that's why Jesus was like, Lucifer, <laughs> it was Lucifer, like, it was like, bro, like, wait, can stop. I say that? Lucifer, get uh, out of here. no, no, don't ever say that. No, not at all. <laughs> Absolutely not. But I feel like, I feel like Peter Dude, cursed. Deliver. I feel like Peter cursed. Okay. I just feel like, <laughs> like Peter right. said it. Say. But I'm just and saying, I'm like John, so, I just oh, want peaceful, happy. If you notice John and Chosen, he never <laughs> ruffled feathers. Oh, he just gosh. literally wanted to do the right thing. If Jesus told him to go plow a field, he would go do it a joyfully. Masculated man. Baby, there's nothing wrong with that. What ain't wrong with that? For a woman. Ain't nothing wrong with that for a woman. But for a man, we God God made us in such a way that we that we should confront things. He made us in a way that we should seek justice. And in our and like that's the kind of man that he made us to be. That's that how Jesus was. You Jesus can't was a man who all men like that though. But I'm saying I'm saying I'm not, well, listen. I don't know all men. I'm not saying I'm. I don't want to say all men. Okay, but I am saying that I am saying that you know just being you know pussified to the point of just you know I'm just gonna cat towel and just oh I'm just gonna follow up behind you and yes whatever you they're just I, leading I differently. Feel, you mean I feel like certain men lead differently and that's okay it doesn't mean that they're like not strong you know i'm okay so i'm not i'm not talking about their strength i'm not talking about different leadership styles i'm just talking about like this pat this this pacified type of man who is just like yes i'm just gonna do whatever and i'm just gonna lay i'm gonna just lay my head up on your breast and you know we're just gonna frolic off into the sunset and and eat mushrooms and i'm talking talking about about john John. marriage where did you (laughs) i'm trying to follow your story (laughs) We were just talking about Peter and John. Right. But we we're talking about Jesus. And then you started talking about how pacified. No, you, you, you brought up John. You, right. you said you were more I like, said, John. like John. You said, and then you started talking about the, these, these very, you know, feminine they're, qualities they're, they're of John. Feminine. I guess they're not feminine. I don't know. That's, Whatever. that's trauma right there. It's not trauma. It's definitely, <laughs> it's definitely not trauma. It's not, I, it, it, I guarantee you men, it's probably husband and wife sitting there listening to this right now. And, and the man is like, yeah, that's right. That's right. Cause like, that's what wrong with you. Because so that's laying my head on Jesus's chest is feminine. No, I'm not saying it's feminine. I'm saying that I'm saying it in, in this part of just, you know, 
cat cowing, kind of doing whatever of, along the the line. Being and submitted just, to Jesus is. I think passive? I think I think ha- I, I think being overly passive. I'm not saying being submitted to Jesus. I'm submitted to Jesus, but I also think that in my submission, he he recognizes my masculinity, and he's like, you know what. He is. He's a fighter. That's what he wants. That's what he does. He, um, he, but imagine if all men were fighters, we would never. All men are done. fighters until until they're castrated as boys. But that's a whole that's a whole different podcast. I'm, I guarantee I can't wait till my book comes out. Escape the box. I'm writing about this in my book. So I, I feel I feel like I feel like when castration comes or when you have little boys who live up to a woman's who who learn to live up to a woman's expectation of who they should be then they don't really understand the kind of man that God made them to be. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Cause they don't, they don't, they don't get it. But nevertheless, thank God I've been doing Noom. <laughs> tell us about it. Why don't you tell the people about it? Um, so Noom is, Noom is a wonderful way of being able to manage daily stress, anxiety, that. all those different things. So my process was like this. I've, um, you go on and you fill out a questionnaire so I fill out the questionnaire and it's asking me questions about what is my daily stress level? What is my daily level of anxiety? Blah, 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 blah. It's just perfect for like the pushing button triggers thing. Yeah, absolutely. It would have helped in the gym. It would have helped in the gym. It would have helped in the gym. It didn't help in the gym. But but nevertheless, it it, it, it every day I get I get a reminder that says, hey, it's time for you to check out your new thing. What they do is they're providing you with techniques, techniques that can tools. ultimately they, Come on. they give you tools. And that's what you need. They give you tools and they don't, they're not expecting for you to have all the tools to know, to, to follow everything, but they are expecting for you to just say these one or two tools are things that I can use in the future. So whether it's meditation, whether it's, you know, whatever it is, they're expecting for you to just be able to take some of these tools and move on. And you also get a person who helps you, which is amazing. Like I can, I can chat with somebody who's like, you know, how are you doing on the process? And so it's a, it's a, it's, it's a really, really great, great, um, great, great program. I love it. You guys now worry less and feel a lot happier. Sign up now for your trial at noom.com slash L W T L that is N O O M.com slash L W T L. Yeah. Y'all please know that you are a lot stronger than your stress. I know it's getting hard out here. I mean, it can be very tough during the holiday season. So really, really, I mean, when I, when I tell y'all that this works, you need the tools, you need the tools. So please noom, N O O M dot com slash L W T L. So, and we're back, but back to conflict <laughs> resolution. Back to conflict resolution. So when my husband and I would get into conflict, I conflict. would he would just like you're pressing my buttons, and I'm like, what are you talking about? Like I'm literally having a conversation with you. Mm-hmm. I I don't mm-hmm. hold on, baby. I'm I'm listening. I'm hold listening. On. I didn't say I anything. I just I felt like I did say something. I apologize. I lied. It's okay, baby. I forgive you. Thank you. So this is growth. This is growth. This is growth. Because the old you would have been like, I don't need you to forgive me. You <laughs> that is exactly it. what I thought. That's why I, I said. So well. <laughs> I said all the time, like, y'all don't need you to forgive me. You ain't gotta forgive me. So yeah. Right. So I don't know who's calling me. That's random. Okay. So I don't purposely try to start conflict. You know, I want us to all get along and to be happy and live in our little happy box forever. Um, so again, with my personality and I know certain family members have a certain personality and I'm like, okay, there's certain things that we're going to stay away from because I don't want to create more conflict. Yeah. And certain, certain subjects that we will encourage you to stay away from, um, vaccines, politics, politics. Yeah. Let's not talk about Trump at the table. Let's not bring up Joe Biden. Biden. Let's not, let's not. That keeps Let's trending. Not. I'm like, you guys, seriously, he's the president of the United States. Like, whether you like him or not, I don't want to hear about anybody that's over 75 oh pooping. Because the thing is, uh, when you turn wanna, 75, you don't know if you're going to be pooping your pants. We don't, don't, don't bring up, don't bring up Trump. Don't bring up Biden. No. Uh, you can take it. Don't bring up Trump. Don't bring up Biden. Um, I don't know. Don't. Yeah, if you if you know that it's a sensitive subject, like don't even bring it up. I got some family members where I'm like, yo, I am not gonna bring up this subject with you because I already know it's gonna be a fight. And and especially when you already know that you got some family members who are probably a little bit more combative <laughs> than you are. 
like, you know, this is it's best to just kind of refrain from those things. But I think that you refrain by having what we talked about earlier, having the proper boundaries and saying things like, you know what, I am not going to, I do not want to entertain this with you. Yes, I hear what you're saying, but I do not want to entertain this. No, I am not going to answer your question. It doesn't matter how many times you ask me. And I really can't stand it like my old people. Like they'll be like, well, you need to respect me. Hold up. Respect is a two way street. I do respect yeah, my elders, but sure. in respecting my elders, it does not mean that you're going to disrespect my boundaries. Like I love Men you. Do not like to be disrespected. Yeah. I, I, I feel like I feel like there's a lot of women out there who don't either, but that's what I'm just saying. Yeah. Like, you know, you have, you have like your older, your, you know, grandmama and you, grandma may, she may mean well, but you're just at a place where you don't feel like somebody else asking you when you getting pregnant. Yeah. You at that place. Yeah. And, and, and grandma, you know, big mama sitting there, she talking about some, so when you're having a baby, baby, when you have, you getting old. When God opens my mind. And you just like, you know what, grandma, I don't really want to have that conversation with you. I yeah. love you so much. I want to just enjoy this time. Let's get the sweet potato pie out. I hope you made some greens this time that you actually washed. Yeah. Like, let's, let, let's yeah. focus on that. Like, I love you. I just don't want to have this conversation right now. Yeah. You just pray for me. Yeah. Just, just pray God for me. with me. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm going to believe God you for you, but soft. do you got a man yet? See, grandmama, see, that ain't what we're going to do because see, after your fourth one, you see, and see, that's what I, I get pitted with the mouth. I get real, I get real sharp with my tongue and you don't even know I cut you. But so I left the room. I, but what I like to do is I like to put myself in somebody else's shoes. There you go with this empathy stuff. No, it's really good. Keep going. Thank you're, you, babe. You're, this but, is a great tool. But if I put myself in their shoes, then I can understand that grandma might not have anybody to talk to. And grandma's yeah. at the house by herself for hours and hours at end. Yeah. She wants some grandbabies. She wants to know she wants to meddle in your business to see what's going on. She misses you. So she might not know what to talk about in your world. So she's probably asking the most basic questions. Right. So to you, it might be trauma, but to her, she's just like, I don't have nobody to talk to. And I finally get to see you once a year, you yeah. know? So like putting myself in my family shoes, or if you go back to your hometown and I don't know about y'all, but I don't, I'm not crazy about my hometown. I know we have listeners from there. I love y'all, but that's not where God called me to be. But Sometimes being Woo. from a small town, they get caught up in their own drama and stress and things they have going on. And I have to put myself in them, their shoes and say, wow, if I lived here and I was caught up in all this drama and things they have going on, I, would, I wouldn't be very happy either. I would yeah. be stressed out too. I might compare my life to other people even more and not be happy. Yeah. You live way out there in Los Angeles in the sun and the it's expensive. You don't, you know what I mean? So, you don't know how we live over here and we, you, you, you know, got, you got this. And, and I'm know, just, like, just like, wait, I help as much as I, I can. Say, Hold up, like, like chillax. Like I don't. Thankfully my family doesn't do that. They don't, they don't, they don't do anything crazy. And they, they come and visit. They're great. But yeah. I just want you to put yourself in their shoes, right? Maybe you go back home and maybe you're from an area that's not very safe and it's not very comfortable to go home and you're used to comfort and you're just like, ah, oh, they're just dealing with daily issues. Like y'all are caught in a circle, a rat race. Y'all all dating the same man. Like y'all just try to put yourself in their shoes and be empathetic and be a listening ear. Yeah. You know how many times I've sat and listened to my sister and you know which one <laughs> I'm talking about, Webigail, mm. and listen to her hunting stories about mm. how she... I have one sister who doesn't drink water. It's so weird. She's on water in She's years. She's like, yeah, I had a, I had a Dr. Pepper. I was like, like how do you did survive? you drink water? Nope. There's water in the Dr. Pepper. No. Okay. Meanwhile, I'm like asking her daughter, what's your address? I will ship you water. <laughs> She's like, I don't know. <laughs> um, right. I was like, wait, I could send you alkaline water. Just let me know. Oh my God. She's like, yeah, I killed some deers and I eat deer for every meal. You know, so I'm just like, okay. Jeez, you know, or maybe she just hilarious. puts a lot of salt on her food. And you know what? She doesn't want to hear my health advice. No, she, she doesn't. She doesn't care. She doesn't care. She doesn't care. She doesn't care. I remember about one time, I, I never forget one Thanksgiving. I, I, I remember the places where the two of you were sitting and you were like, you were like, listen, you need to drink water. Your body, you were just going in, going in. You're like, your body's and also like, you need water. to make sure that, you know, blah, 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 you're getting your proper nutrients, blah, blah, blah. And she was just looking at you. And then, and then she looked over at me and she looked back at you. She said, I'm going to smoke a cigarette. <laughs> I was like, she I, didn't care. I laughed because I was like, yo, she didn't hear a word. She just didn't hear a word. You I just poured out your entire life and she didn't care. <laughs> Some people you're like, I'm planting seeds, but this particular no, sister, I was not planting no, seeds. just gone and gone and gone. And that's another thing. Like if you want the people who you always got to give your opinion, everybody don't. Like legit, there are some things you don't have to talk about. If somebody look at you talking about, like, you know, nowadays you even got the vegan and carnivore uh, uh, debate. 
Where like you get I'm, your protein from? Yeah, like I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a carnivore. What say? Like you know how how you get it? Like I get it now. I get I get it from people who are like, oh, so also oh, now, so so you so you eat animals. So you know where do where do you get this from? Or you know if you yeah. don't if you're not eating kale, if you're not doing yeah. this, then you know that you're that you're raising up your blood pressure and you're. And I'm just like, yo, chillax, so y'all. To my life, y'all, <laughs> like legit. Number one, I never asked you for your opinion, which should tell you. I don't care anything about your opinion. Cause I'd be quick yeah. to tell people like, yo, you not, you, you saying something to me, don't change nothing about my life. If you walked out the door of my life right now, I wouldn't care. Yeah. You know? So if you want those people who you feel like you always got to give your opinion, don't just chill, bro. Like chill. Like now you're going to be talking about LeBron and the fight. <laughs> Especially if you're from Detroit. <laughs> Like, oh my God. You saw LeBron, LeBron. Oh my God. You better leave no LeBron slander. No Lakers slander in this house, Mr. Lindsay. LeBron. LeBron. All right. Speaking of holidays. The bean boxes. I'm getting the coffee. The, 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 the coffee. That coffee good too. I know it. So I don't drink coffee. I know you do. Uh-huh. And like you've, you're smashing it. And mama loves it. And we have other coffee drinkers in the house. Um, But I think finding a holiday gift is hard, especially for family sometimes, because you're like, what do you need? What do you get? And if, um, thankfully, we have three or four coffee drinkers in the house. So I added the Bean Box to our holiday shopping list. And Bean Box offers and connects um, coffee lovers to some of the world's best specialty coffees. It's so cool because when it came, it was like this gift thing and yeah. you know, it was like a whole experience. Right. Yeah. And so we ended up giving it to our mother in love as a gift and she was blown away. Yeah. I mean, coffee, the coffee is great. I mean, you have you have light, dark, medium roast. I love the espresso. I like, my I like the. You know, all right. Uh, I like the uh, <laughs> I like the uh, the espresso. Um, I like mine. I like mine just naked so I can. Yes. I knew you about to do that. I like mine. I just, like you naked because I. <laughs> but I um but the reason the reason why is because you know I can I, I like to drink it before I go to the gym. It's a great, you know, great pick me up before I go to the gym. But you need to make sure that, you know, if you if you have a coffee drinker in your family, you're wondering what do I get them? I'm telling you the bean box is the perfect gift for you to get them. You have um you have just endless choices. Mm-hmm. Um freshness is gonna be guaranteed, and also you're supporting small roasters with every uh, sip. You have the coffee sampler gift subscription Four new expertly uh, curated coffees to explore every Amazing. month. You save when you give uh, when you give six months or more. You have World Coffee Tour Box, a globe trotting trip through 16 of the world's best micro lot coffees, deluxe coffee and Bisco tasting. Bar. Oh, them Bisco cookies be, be bussing. <laughs> Eight gourmet coffees pair with dunkable handmade uh, biscotti. Uh, d- uh, deluxe coffee and chocolate tasting box. Eight gourmet uh, coffees, perfectly matched with artesian chocolates. This is so clutch because finding gifts it's is bushing. so hard nowadays. And when I say it's fancy, when you order it and your family member sees it, you're gonna be like, "Wow! Like this is a really nice gift." Now, give the coffee fanatic in your life an unforgettable coffee tasting experience with Beanbox. Order today at beanbox.com slash lwtl and get fifteen percent off purchases of $40 or more. Y'all listen, it's 15% off of purchases, $40 or more with promo code LWTL at bean, B-E-A-N box.com slash L-W-T-L. Beanbox.com. Hey. Beanbox.com slash but you know what? You know what I did like last family trip? Boxing. I remember just kind of sitting with my family just listening to them and just like being an ear. Cause I feel like sometimes people just want somebody to listen to them. And I feel like that's the greatest way we can be examples. Like, I feel like when Jesus went into places, he wasn't like throwing the Bible at everybody. Right. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes you just, I'm sure he just sat and listened to them. That's all I do when I get around my in-loves. I just sit down and I just listen and laugh. <clears throat> right. So, is this a comedy show? I feel like if you go in <laughs> snooty and thinking you're better than everybody else, you're not being an example for Jesus. Like you're not, Cause everybody, everybody got, everybody got that one snooty auntie. Everybody got that one snooty auntie who's like, oh my gosh, like, we go. oh, I'm not, I'm not going to eat that or, you know. But oh my gosh, you saying that's me? I'm not saying that's you. Am I some, some of your, some of your in-loves may think that's, that's probably you. I'm so nice. I just, no, it's not, it's not, no, food. it's not, it's not about, it's not about you being, it's not about you being meat or nice. I don't, I don't, I don't mean you in, in that 
personality way, but I mean, when it comes into your different needs, you're right. Like, I'm you a know, little high you come in with the alkaline water and you come in like, well, I've already ordered my vegan food and oh, I'm not going to drink that. I'm not. When I went to your family's house for the first time, or your family's reunion. It was a family reunion. And I was it pregnant was. with Logan. And you had, you had, you brought alkaline I brought, water. brought a big thing of alkaline water. Uh-huh. And your uncle. These are people who are from, we, we, I grew up in Mississippi. <laughs> I drank out of a water hose growing up. So continue. So I just want to give people context so into what, what you're about to hear. I'm there and everybody has all this food and I have nothing. I have no food and no water. I, I remember a big that. jug of water. I think I went and got you a subway, didn't I? Right. The thing was, y'all, no we were in the middle of nowhere and it was so frustrating because I was pregnant, newly pregnant and we didn't announce <clears> it or anything. <throat> I would might have been like six or seven weeks pregnant and, and they were barbecuing. I remember they that. were barbecuing. The smell to me was a disaster just because I was pregnant and nothing smelled good. Meat didn't smell good at all when I was pregnant. And so I remember your uncle sitting next to me like, where your food at? And I was like, oh, I'm vegan. What that mean? <laughs> what that mean? <laughs> um, I don't eat anything that has a mother. Well, what you no, eat then? You, no eat no, you, you don't eat no food. What, 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 that, what that mean? I remember he said, he said, I got no mother. These hamburgers ain't got no mother. <laughs> he was like, yes, they 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 had a mother. He's like, they ain't got no mother now. They on that grill. I was like, oh. Right. So then I, you had the water. And it was like, you tell me you went to the store and you paid for what, water. What, what, how much how much was that water? How, how much that water ruined you? Um, this water is about five dollars. You paid five dollars. You paid five dollars for that water. $5 for what? $5 for what? <laughs> I would never forget that. But okay. but here, but can I can I say something to that, babe? Of course. If you're out there, and if that's you, and if that's your preferences, like I don't let anybody shame me yeah. for my preferences. That's real. Because my preferences may not be yours. Yeah. Like if you get there and you like, yo, I know y'all. Like I'm a carnivore. I'm not eating chitlins. I had to eat them when I was a kid, oh, but I'm not. You had to eat chitlins. Yeah, I had to eat chitlins. Probably still digesting. No, I've I, I've. I've, I've I've released them. Okay. Yeah, but I I did I them the nasty things as a kid, and when you get to that point, like that ain't your preference. You like, yo, I don't eat that. Or if you like, you know, if I'm vegan and you got a strong conviction with that, be vegan. Yeah. Like be don't you. Let pressure you. Here's the only other thing: if you gonna have a conviction about it, if that's gonna be your preference, yeah. then don't put that preference on somebody else. Like if you know other people coming to your house, like this is something I I, I can't stand. I get it, you vegan, but you invite everybody to your house to eat. And then you know that your family members aren't vegan. So they're going to pull up expecting to eat, but you only got a vegan spread. That's selfish to me. So what I did was when I was vegan is I remember um, we catered, we catered Thanksgiving. Well, we two Thanksgivings I yeah. cooked. Yeah, two you did. And then it was too exhausting and too that much was to travel. Way so too I just catered it and I had people had meat options. I had vegan options. Um, so I just, you know, you go in with that mindset and the thing is don't go in there and say, oh, I ain't none of this food. I, this house nasty. I'm not gonna, and don't go in there and act super bougie. Like I'm so hungry. I'm just going to Uber eats, like enjoy your family and then leave and go get food. And yeah. It's okay. You're like, Hey, yo, y'all, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta make a run real. Remember, remember I did that, remember I did that the first time. You did, I you did I came, the first time. I, remember we went to like Applebee's or somewhere? No, or I, I, or I went to Burger King. Burger Me, King. I, yeah, went to Burger King. Went to Burger King. I went to Burger King. Yo, I got in the line. Yo, I call, you, you called me. You was like, you was like, babe, where are you? I was like, oh, I'm in the car. She's like, why don't you come inside? I was like, yeah, I got to finish this Whopper real quick. Cause <laughs> and then I had them little Debbie snack cakes. You so did. I went to Myers. And I had bought, like, I was just buying snacks. Like, yo, bro was hungry. I was starving. He was fasting in Michigan. I was starving. And, like, when the food came, I was like, oh, this ain't going to be. Like, I, I kind of I knew it was going to be a problem when the mashed potatoes came from a box. Yeah. So the first Christmas was, or first Thanksgiving was rough. But the second one, I decided to cook. Remember? And I cooked for you. I made the turkey. And you were like, it was falling off the bone and you loved it. Oh, you yeah, I do remember that. that. I do remember that. I think the, I think the next I think the next year, Mom and Love, Mom and Love wanted to cook. But well, she brought out the turkey. She's so precious. She, she brought it out on Thanksgiving morning, <laughs> pulled it out the freezer and said, what you think, y'all? You hey, we, think we can get hey, this cooked? Hey, we, like, <laughs> we got, we came to the house from the hotel. And we was, I was like, hey, Mom, like, I love you. Like, what you doing? And I was like, Mom, so you already got the turkey going? And she was like, oh, I got the turkey. Oh, it's I in the fridge. She took it out. She put it on the table. She said, what do you guys want to do with it? Um, we ain't going to eat this turkey today. No, we ain't eat this turkey. <laughs> so the next two years I cooked, but yeah, it took like five or six hours in my life. I was up at 6 a.m. It was a lot. Cooking, then I had to run back to the hotel to get y'all, come back to the house, 
and cleaning up and then you know it was just like it was way too much but i was able to bring some mississippi culture to the thing but and they love your food your food's good yeah but if y'all with your family like we about to go to be with ours but hey if y'all with your family just be cool just be chill just just be just be chill I appreciate it, baby. Just be, just be chill. Just be cool. All right. Let me talk. All right, y'all. We love y'all so much. Make sure y'all share this. Um, Subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. I introduce. Bye, y'all. Love y'all.